Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording it for a radio broadcast on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session, and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jason Miller, executive editor on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM, and federalnewsradio.com. Welcome to the discussion. My guests today are Sanjay Gupta, the Chief Technology Officer for the Small Business Administration, Ben Bergenson, the Chief Information Officer for the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, and Tim Burke, a Federal Cloud Product Manager for QTS. Gentlemen, welcome to the program today. Before we get started, let me set a little context for our discussion. For its federal IT strategy, the Trump administration is continuing the emphasis on the use of cloud computing as established under the previous administration. But cloud is a moving target for agencies. The number of cloud service providers who have received approval under the Federal Risk Authorization and Management, or FedRAMP, program is growing. 86 so far have received approval, another 69 are in the process. And FedRAMP itself has evolved to accommodate a wider range of security requirements, including establishing a FISMA high baseline. Now, at the same time, agencies are expanding the types of workloads they feel confident in moving to the cloud. They're rationalizing, modernizing applications in an effort to move off legacy IT systems, and that continues to gain momentum. In fact, IDC Government Insights predicts spending on cloud services will increase to $3.3 billion by 2021 in the federal market. That's up from $2.2 billion in 2017. IDC also expects hybrid cloud services to grow by 11% over the next five years. That's the second largest by percentage category behind the move to public cloud services. Now with all this activity, agencies are trying to understand what makes the most sense for their mission needs. A General Services Administration's Best Practices Guide for Hybrid Cloud highlighted several considerations as agencies implemented those, these services. GSA says integration of multiple cloud environments, composition, which provides the flexibility of the hybrid cloud model, and organizational impact, which helps agencies decide the type of system or data that makes the most sense, are definitely key ingredients to a successful cloud approach. Now, at the same time, agencies also not be, not be able to give up all of their on-premise data center storage and processing power. Now, this is creating what some are calling a dual setup called hybrid IT. This concept brings together public and private sector expertise and cloud services while potentially saving agencies money and improving their effectiveness. So how do agencies find success and prosper in this new hybrid IT model? Well, that's where our guests come in. And once again, our guests today are Sanjay Gupta, the Chief Technology Officer at the Small Business Administration, Benjamin Bergenson, the Chief Information Officer at the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, and Tim Burke, a Federal Cloud Product Manager for QTS. Ben, let me just turn to you and start with the discussion with you. Uh, Cloud computing, workloads, where are you guys at with the cloud? How are you moving toward this, what, what some are calling this hybrid IT model in some ways? At the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, for several years we've already had our financial systems and our HR systems, as well as time cards and payroll in the cloud. We are now moving, so we've had for over a decade the same building and office space. Our entire federal agency is moving to another location. So that's a great opportunity to take a look at everything from end to end to see what is the best service that we can provide to our agency, to our exports and reverse trade missions, and as well as our movers that are mobile and they are deployed globally in different continents and areas. So we're looking at all our services and saying, what else can we move? We just recently moved email services as well as a personal network drive, so that be your P drive or your H drive, whatever you call it, and that helps because when you're moving, there's a lot of changes. The new facility is being built, the old facility is being renovated for the new tenant, and it doesn't matter when everything is in the cloud, the mission just keeps going on smoothly. And the next step that we're gonna be doing is moving our collaboration portal to the cloud as well as our network shares. So we might even get rid of our network shares and put them into a collaboration portal. So that's a, a new change. The cool thing is I'm sitting back and listening to the different mission operators, the country managers, and seeing what they want. And in one of our last strategic meetings, one of the directors of a division said, so where do you want all of this information that we did to analyze where we should go? 
and the group said we want it online <laughs> I'm like yay <laughs> I I am so happy because I don't have to be the one pushing I'm just seeing that the the customer base and the agency wants it and that's how you work behind the scenes to get your organization to where they need to be and you end up saving a lot of money moving to the cloud as well as being a lot nimbler if you're going to grow an office and you need to add 20 people for a month and then the month afterwards you need to shrink it because your reverse trade mission is done for that country or that city and you can do that in the cloud at any time the last thing is there's a baseline of cybersecurity. you know what you're getting when you go with FedRAMP low and medium and high and you can feel confident that you're going to get certain things and not have to worry about okay is this additional security or is this less so with savings and being nimble and baselines it's the way to go all right so a couple of things to pull from there uh, first of all the the security discussion will happen later in the program so I'm going to hold off on that but let me just uh, clarify a couple things um, your HR your your financial management time cards payroll that's in the cloud is that shared services cloud yes okay so it's this is not uh, internal cloud yes so we do not have an internal cloud we have federal shared services from other federal agencies we also have commercial cloud providers for different areas so we are already a hybrid environment we've got some locally we've got that HR admin and finance from a shared service federal agency we have our email and personal drives from a commercial provider we have our website from another commercial provider so it's integrating three or four federal agencies two or three commercial industry cloud providers plus our local environment and wanting to get a holistic view of what are the best services to provide to the mission and what makes sense because we're in all of those areas all right that's why it keeps you busy and keeps you plenty to do uh, let me move over to Sanjay from SBA now SBA is uh, also recently moving a lot into the cloud give us an update where SBA is at sure so uh, let me just kind of give you a quick background so Maria wrote who's our CIO she started in October of last year uh, the first week she was in here, I was not here, I started in January of this year, so I do not know that's what I've heard from her. So the data center in our HQ uh, office was having all kinds of environmental problems in terms of uh, the temperatures being in the 110, 120 degrees range, water being in the data center, uh, and a whole slew of issues in terms of performance, stability, etc. So she had made a very quick decision back then to say that we're not going to be living in this environment for too long. And she had made a, a, a note saying that we'll be down to four racks in the next foreseeable 12 months or so. Uh, so let's fast forward. We kicked off our project for the cloud initiative at SBA in, in February of this year. Uh, and, and in 82 days, we have uh, accomplished uh, several things in that. First off, we have had the architecture design implementation completed as well as the ATO completed in 82 calendar days. If somebody's counting, we did actually that in 57 working days. <laughs> um, number two, uh, we had no new net funding available for this project. So when Maria came on board at SBA, the budgets for fiscal 17 were already decided, uh, so there was no cloud funding available. So then the question becomes, how do you fund this initiative when you already have the keep the lights on operation going on? So I'll talk a little bit later on, on how we funded it, but in essence, we have been looking at all of our contracts and we've been right-sizing all our contracts, and there are multiple dimensions to right-sizing. So namely, uh, we have, let's say, a large number of users we have licensed for a product, you know, whatever that product is, and we're seeing that the use for in the agency is for a much lo lower number. So we've been right-sizing that. We have complementary and supplementary pro uh, products in our portfolio, and we're looking at those and saying, how can we rationalize the portfolio and have some cost savings? So put differently, we've used those techniques to generate the funds to fund our SBA cloud initiative. Further, the funding came from using resources like Microsoft licensing. And again, uh, our deputy CIO, Guy Cavallo, he comes from Microsoft. He understands Microsoft enterprise licensing inside out. So namely, what we did is we have credits for training. We have support contracts built into that as benefits. We converted some of those to fund our cloud initiative. So all in all, we use the funding from existing contracts, repurposing that funding to fund our cloud initiative. Number three, uh, we are the first agency that we are aware of to implement CDM in the cloud. If some of you are familiar with continuous diagnostics and monitoring from DHS, uh, is an initiative, it's a good initiative, uh, 
however it has been designed from an on-premise implementation. One of the things uh, being a cloud first strategy that Maria had adopted when she came on board here was the fact that we are not going to buy any more hardware for this data center environment. So guess what? Uh, lo and behold, we started having this dialogue with DHS about the CDM implementation, and so we are the first agency to implement CDM in the cloud. Uh, so those are some of the highlights from a cloud standpoint that we have uh, underway here. From In terms of workloads, we are all into the cloud. So this is not a question about are we moving some workloads or are we looking at other workloads. Uh, one of the things that we inherited, including Maria, was uh, we had transitioned our mail system to the cloud back in May of uh, 2016. Uh, but only mail was turned on from the Office 365 suite. So we worked on uh, adding more functionality from Office 365 to turn on for, for a user community. So, so there's a lot about our, our cloud story, and I also want to talk about the fact that we are using a multi-crowd approach. Namely, we are in Azure, we are in AWS, and also in Salesforce. So we, we understand that we'll not be, uh, we, we've designed our architecture which is cloud agnostic or cloud provider agnostic, so it helps us uh, be able to use those fundamental design principles and architecture across the board from an AWS or Azure standpoint. And I'll be happy to talk a little bit more about it later on. All right, so there's plenty to pull from that. One quick follow-up. Uh, you said you started 82 days, you have architecture, you have design, you have an ATO completed. Is there, so where do you go from there? Is it, is it starting to move the applications and yeah, systems? Yes, absolutely. So, so yes, uh, good point. We have, as I speak today, 40 plus VMs already spun up in our, in our Azure environment. Uh, we're targeting an infrastructure as a service model at the moment. And uh, we're also in the process of migrating applications. Uh, we designed a cloud strategy and an implementation plan in terms of releases using an agile methodology. We are actually going to start a release three actually today. Uh, and, and we have two week sprints. Uh, and each release is comprised of four sprints of two weeks each. So yes, we are in the migration process and we're just literally starting today. Excellent, excellent news. All right, let's move to Tim Burke from QTS. React a little bit to what you heard from uh, Ben and, and Sanjay a little bit and how that fits into what you're seeing across the federal market. Sure, um, 82 days. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That's really fast. Um, so our role as CSP or service provider here at QTS is that we provide a broad range of services that help meet your mission needs, right? Part of that's us understanding what your goals are, what your drivers are. Is it an event? Is it a mandate? Is it a, a lack of skills for whatever reason in any particular department within the organization? Um, and that we design everything from uh, the data center level to cloud services to managed services that help meet those needs. And we know, we understand, you heard about the different types of uh, applications that are being moved or being considered being moved. As we work with you guys as a partner, a, a trusted technology and compliance partner, to match and meet those needs of the application. We, if we don't help you meet the mission, then collectively we're not successful. And, and we've built things in a way, right, and you want organizations that build things in a way that can support that, not just a, a person or a group, but a team of folks to help support you. It would be an extension of the organization. So in, in many ways, what you kind of heard from, from Ben and, and Sanjay is this idea of m hybrid IT environment, this, this idea that we're sometimes it's federal, sometimes it's, it's commercial. Are you seeing that? Is that the trend that you're seeing among your federal clients? Absolutely. And we're seeing a cross of both where we see have commercial entities that provide both services to commercial and federal agencies. So a, a typical use, right, in some of these traditional uses where we have a customer doing HR or DR and a hybrid deployment either between their premise and a QTS premise, and likewise between multiple QTS data centers. Right? So they're executing those plans and we are, as that enabler, help them get there. Ben, you heard uh, Sanjay talk a little bit about workloads. It's a decision of okay, what goes to the cloud, what doesn't. You guys are in the middle of that kind of discussion now too. Can you talk a little bit about how you decide on, on the specific workload? You think, okay, that is cloud ready or that can be cloud ready or no, I think we need to keep this maybe even internal? The thing that US Trade is doing is moving everything to shared services. So it's a matter of timing and sequencing. So everything that we can, we're moving because we're finding out that we have a, a set budget and a set amount of contracts as well as agreements with other federal agencies and our mission just keeps going up and up and up. So what we're doing is saying, okay, what is the sequencing for and the impact on the workload? So we, we're upgrading our data analytics for what areas we should be going into 
for our reverse trade missions and our pilot programs and our training of U.S. companies as well as other countries for U.S. exports. We're also upgrading our infrastructure and saying, okay, if this is five or ten years old, should we even be upgrading it? Why don't we just move this entire service to the cloud? And so we're looking at mission services as opposed to equipment, and it's turning out that everything is going <laughs> except for the PC. We haven't figured out how to have a cloud-based PC. Everyone still wants their computer and printing, but we're moving a lot more to electronic workflows and that can also be done in the cloud. So we're gonna have an environment that does both and it's the sequencing of we, we're having an aging infrastructure and so our, our air conditioning went right. this past summer and we actually had a pilot program for the personal drives and that moved to the top of the list because they said, well, what if my personal drive isn't available? I said, well, we have it synchronized on your laptop, on your smartphone, and in the cloud, and if you lose connectivity, it doesn't matter whether or not the air conditioning is working or not. You have copies of it everywhere, and it synchronizes automatically in the background. Our users ended up doing that and saying, this is great, and then they started telling each other, and then people saying, well, I want my entire team and the other teams, why haven't they gotten on board yet? Because I want to be able to share documents with them and it was very synergetic. We're going to take a quick break, but uh, maybe there's something to follow up with you on around uh, the desktop. I would, uh, the the follow-up question that came to mind is, what, thin clients, zero clients? They still can't be comfortable with that, but we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and, and talk maybe a little bit about that. You're listening to the panel discussion, Hybrid IT and Government, sponsored by QTS on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.